Moving on to the next page, Intermediate Value Theorem. If we look at the Intermediate Value Theorem, hopefully you went through this in pre-calc, but if F is continuous, has to be continuous on A, B, and K is any Y value between F of A and F of B, then there is at least one value C between A and B such that F of C is equal to K. Blah, 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 lots of stuff. But what that means is that F takes on every value between F of A and F of B. Where is this used most often? It's used in other cases, but to me, what, where this is used most often is that if I have H of 2 is equal to negative 15, a negative value, and H of 3 is equal to 4, a positive value, what had to happen between 2 and 3? Well, I must have a 0. A zero exists between x equal to 2 and x equal to 3. That tells me that. That's the intermediate value theorem. So it takes on every value between negative 15 and 4, especially a zero. The other question is, is could, uh, could I have many, many c values that take on this k value? Yes, you could have something that oscillates quite a bit if you wanted. It could take it on many times. But as long as you have a continuous function, it guarantees at least one. This is an existence theorem, so it just guarantees us at least one. So let's look at number nine now. Does the intermediate value theorem guarantee a C value on the given interval? Well, look at this. First of all, this is a continuous function. If we have any polynomial, it's going to be continuous. This is a polynomial, quadratic. And so when we look at this, f of c is equal to 12 on this interval. So we have to check the endpoints, and c of 12 falls in between my two y values. So looking at this, I take and I plug in 0 and I plug in 5. I do get another 0. That's my y value. Then I get a 20. Is 12 in between those two? And the answer would be yes. So how we justify this, this is very important on how we start looking at these things, but we do justify with an explanation. So when I look down here, this is my justification. Since f is continuous and 12 is between 0 and 20, by the intermediate value theorem, there must be a c value in the interval between 0 and 5. And that's how you need to justify that the intermediate value theorem does work. So here we go again. We plug in 0 for this function in here, and we get negative 2. We plug in 3, we get 5. Oh, oh wait a second. 4 falls be Wait a second. There's something wrong here, though. What's wrong with this function right here when we talk about the intermediate value theorem? Now, if you look, it says that f has to be continuous for this to work. Is this continuous in part B? The answer is no. And so we cannot even use the intermediate value theorem for this one right here because it's not continuous. So when looking at this now, the intermediate value theorem does fail because G is not continuous. There might be a C value that does bring on a value of four However, I can't confirm that fully because this does not satisfy the intermediate value theorem. Number 10. Now it says find the value of c. To do this, it's very easy. All you do is take the function x squared minus x and set it equal to that y value that I'm looking for. So I'm looking at a over here. x squared minus x is equal to 12. I want to know where that it happens. I'm guaranteed it by the intermediate value theorem, so now I just go ahead and solve it. Note that we do get two answers here. However, there's only one of them that are on the interval 0 to 5. So we get the C value being 4 on 0 to 5. That's, the, that's what we wanted. For this last piece, I'm going to let you read through this and try to figure out some of these things for yourself. I'll pop the answers for the last couple at the very end, but I think you can read through this and figure out some of the translations yourself. And so, first of all, paragraphs. You need to know all these paragraphs. Make sure you study them and understand them. Then if we move on to graphing adjustments, these are transformations that we do try to make 
to a graph. And so what we want to do is figure out which one does which. Please read through these and double check what each one of these are. Okay?